All right. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? My name is Dr. Juwan. I'm a chiropractic functional neurologist. I have a practice located in Carroll Street, Illinois. I'm a chiropractor, yes. I've been in practice, prior practice for 13 years. And what I'm going to share with you, I'm going to share with you a common condition that a lot of people have. It's called fibromyalgia. Yes, it is a neuromuscular disease. Okay, so who am I? Who am I? All right, I have a lot of initials after my name. I'm also an adjunct professor at the College of DuPage. I teach human anatomy and physiology to the up and coming doctors and nurses and healthcare practitioners. And it keeps me young and it keeps me very young. So it's a lot of fun. I have my webpage is www.totalhealthdupage.com. My phone number is 630 653 2225. I do have a Facebook page, and if you want to check it out, please feel free to do so. Make sure you like us on Facebook. I post a lot of videos of treatment protocols. I do have a YouTube page as well that links right onto that. So, you know, again, if you have five minutes and you want to laugh or whatever, want to get educated, check out my page. So, the objectives. What I want to do is I want to state, state the ACR definition of fibromyalgia. I'm going to identify five or more overlapping comorbidities, outline the risk factors, describe the non-pharmacological approach to this treatment, also to review the prognosis for fibromyalgia patients. Okay, some facts. Some facts about fibromyalgia are very, very important. Okay. Is it caused by a virus? No, it's not. It's not caused by a virus, virus whatsoever. So you can't take antivirals if you have fibromyalgia. Three to six of the population has fibromyalgia. Three to six of the percent of the population of 330 million Americans across the United States from Maine to Hawaii, there's a small percentage of people who have it. That's roughly about 25 million people who have it, okay? And it is a syndrome. Some people call it a disease. It could be either a disease or a syndrome. I always coin it as a syndrome through my research. Is it diagnosed with a blood test? No, it's not. You cannot diagnose fibromyalgia with a blood test. If you, do, if you have fibromyalgia or if you know somebody who does hit, have fibromyalgia, they get blood work done. It comes in within normal limits. Exercise has shown to decrease the fibromyalgia symptoms. Yes, it does. Okay, so what is it? What is fibromyalgia? Okay, so first and foremost, be skeptical. Be very, very skeptical. If you read something that says it will cure the symptoms, okay? There's not a cure for the symptom. You can't take a pill and the pain goes away. It doesn't work that way with fibromyalgia. Patients need to understand their symptoms so they can, so they can begin to take control and manage their pain. So, the common condition characterized by long-term body-wide pain and tender points in the joints, muscles, tendons, and other soft tissue. What they feel, or what you feel, you're in a chronic pain state. The best description I ever heard about fibromyalgia, it's, and somebody came to me and she says, Doc, it feels like I run a marathon every single day. And when I touched her, she jumped off the table. You have nerve stimuli causing pain. What happens, you have a reduced pain threshold. So what hurts, what doesn't hurt for most people, touching their skin, hurts for people who have fiber, okay? And again, slight pressure points, lowers the pain threshold. Ow, I hurt. Common symptoms, fatigue, morning stiffness, sleep problems, irritability, headaches, depression and anxiety. Depression is a huge component of fibromyalgia because people are in pain constantly and most of the medical professionals or even any, any type of professional out there, they don't, know the, they don't know the cause. So imagine, imagine something's wrong with you and no one can give you the answer. That would make me depressed. I don't know if I do, that would make me depressed. Okay, so the chronic definition of fibromyalgia. 
chronic and widespread pain located in 11 or more of 18 tender points. Now this was uh, coined by the American College of Rheumatology in 1990. It's first described as, as a common and complex pain disorder that affects people physically, mentally, and socially. It's a syndrome. Remember, it's a syndrome rather than a disease. And what is a syndrome? A syndrome is a collection. Keyword here, collection of signs and symptoms that occur together without identifiable cause. What this really, again, what this means is that, okay, so if you got into a car accident or if you got hit by the bus or if you fell off the bus or fell down the stairs, yes, you're gonna have chronic widespread body pain, most likely in your whole body. However, with fibromyalgia, there's no cause. And you have tender points, notable tender points in at least 11 of the 18 common most points that there are on the body, and I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, because what a disease is, what's a, syn what's a syndrome, what's a disease, okay? A disease, which is a medical condition with specific, with specific cause or causes and recognizable signs and symptoms. That's a disease. What is fibromyalgia? Fibromyalgia is a set of symptoms not caused by a disease. So tissue pathology with distinct symptoms and cause of agent. So like tuberculosis, cause in a chronic cough. Tuberculosis is a cause of agent that can be cured. Now, what they did, they took tissue samples with people with fibromyalgia and people who didn't have fibromyalgia. They looked, under, they looked under a little tiny microscope, okay, and they realized the tissue samples were the exact same. So the science behind fibromyalgia tends to be treated rather than rather dismissively by the medical community. So here's a controversy of fibromyalgia, okay, and this is what I run into with a lot of my patients. It's not a disease process, it can't be cured. The problem, it cannot be understood according to the classic medical model. What that means, if it can't be seen under a scan, if it can't be sought out under blood work, it doesn't exist. So imagine going to your medical professional, whomever that is, they take blood work. They throw you under the big tube, they look at MRI, CT scans, PEC scans, brain scans, you name it scans, and everything is within normal limits. What happens? How does that make you feel? It makes you feel depressed, okay? I would be depressed if doing all those tests came out normal. It's heartbreaking, yes, I know. So remember, if it's not on an image, scan and or blood work, it doesn't exist. So this is why a lot of times the medical community, is, this is dismissive. It's, it's painful. So what is the problem? It is, not, it is not a primary psychological disorder. So as in many chronic conditions, psychological factors may play a role. It may upregulate the central nervous system, so abnormal pain transmission response, and also with that, you have a disordered sensory processing. So people who have chronic pain, even if you're in pain, what happens? You're in this chronic pain state. You have a central processing, the brain, disorder, doesn't know how to calm it down. What happens when you stub your toe or you hit your finger? All you, do, all you want, if somebody asks you for your password, for your, for your debit card, you're gonna say it. Why? Because that central processing system is not functional. All your main focus is to get out of pain. So what is the problem? So the stimuli causing pain originally mainly in the muscles. So the skeletal muscle metabolism, decreased blood flow, which causes chronic fatigue and weakness. Hence the pain with strenuous exertion, it just hurts to move. Most of the people who have fibromyalgia are in a chronic pain state in the skeletal muscle area, it just hurts to move. So the causes, what causes this? The bottom line, it's unknown. There's many theories, okay, many theories. But because they can't find on a blood work or a scan, it's unknown. Sleep disturbances, which are very common in fibromyalgia patients, may actually cause the condition. Pilot studies have shown a possible inherited tendency toward the disease. It's very preliminary. So, 
The perception of pain. What causes pain? How do we feel pain? And what is what's what's this something called pain? Pain is a universal experience that serves the vital function of triggering triggering avoidance. As human beings, we all want to avoid pain and move over to pleasure. The cardinal symptom of fibromyalgia is widespread body pain. We have tender points at the musculoskeletal junction and the amplification of the central nervous system. Remember, these people are in chronic pain, and you, you may be as well. Your brain's not thinking correctly. Anxiety, depression, and so forth and so on. And pain is personal. What hurts you may not hurt somebody else. What hurts somebody else may hurt you. So some 30 years ago, Mel Zeckman Walt proposed a pain that is complex integration, proposed that pain is a complex integration of noxious stimuli and cognitive factors. Again, the noxious stimuli, again, that's stuff that causes pain. And cognitive factors, that's, that's up here, that's your brain. In other words, the emotional aspects of having a chronic pain state and one's realization of the problem may both influence the final experience of pain. All that really means is what hurts one won't hurt the other. And people who are in fibromyalgia, they're in pain all the time. So what is, how do they describe it? Okay, it's a chronic, chronic musculoskeletal syndrome characterized by widespread musculoskeletal aches and pains, stiffness in the muscle, I'm sorry, the muscle tissue, ligaments and tendons, soft tissue tenderness. What happens when you're in pain all the time? You get fatigue. You have sleep disorders. GI upset. Most common spinoff of if you have fibromyalgia is that what? You have irritable bowel syndrome. You see how they go, they go hand in hand? And then what, then what, and that's what happened? Depression. So what is effect? Okay, I talk about these tender points. You're talking, you know, what are, what are tender points? Tender points and effects the neck, the shoulders, the chest, the legs, and lower back. Symptoms, symptoms to those of chronic fatigue syndrome and mild fascial pain syndrome. So you have the tender points in the neck, in the front, the base of the skull, neck and shoulders, below the side, the bone, the elbow, upper, outer buttock, hip area, just above the knee on the inside. Widespread body pain. Doc, it just hurts here, 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 here. It hurts all over. Sound familiar? So where does it come from? So 10 million of US Americans, which is three to 6% of the population, 80% are women. The high in incidence is women from 22 to 55 years of age. Genetic component, among siblings and mothers and daughters. You see the common trend, female. The incidence rises with age, so by 80 years old, 8% of the population experiences fibromyalgia. Again, the question is, why, does, why do females experience fibromyalgia more than men? There are a plethora of reasons, which I don't want to go into in this lecture here, you can Google it, do the research on your own, but why it affects more females than males, it's just, I, I always say it just is. Age, the most common in young adults, increases with age. Gender, again, 10 times more common in females. It could be genetic. If grandma has it, mom has it, you may have it. Often follows a trauma, which is infectious or stress. Now, not saying that if you have fibro, you had trauma or infection. It's just saying that if there was trauma involved or you had some type of infection early on, you may get it. I have patients of mine, trauma like, ch like child abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Yes, I have fibromyalgia. It is a spin-off, but it's not saying that if you have this, then you'll have that. It just so happens that they connect. I had a patient of mine, she had, uh, she had uh, chicken pox. As a kid, that virus stays in her. She's 25 years old, pain all over. Risk factors, what happens? Sleep disorders. Unknown whether sleep difficulties are the cause or the result of fibromyalgia. And rheumatic diseases, this is your immune system. Rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, most likely to develop into fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia. Now, sleep is a big thing. When we sleep, we repair our muscle tissue. So when they're not sleeping, the, the, most, the, the goal with anybody with fibromyalgia is to get them to sleep. Because if you're not sleeping, you're aching. 
And we've all experienced a time back in high school or college or wherever the last educational uh, place we're at, final exams. I got students of mine, even myself, when I was going through my chiropractic training, we had 12 exams in a three week period. Sure, by the, 12, by the third week, we all felt like we had fibromyalgia because we weren't sleeping. So pathophysiology, again, it's unknown. Produces vague symptoms that may, uh, that may be associated with diminished blood flow to the certain parts of the brain and increased amounts of substance P. Now, substance P, what it is, is thought to be a sensory neurotransmitter involved in the communication of pain, touch, and temperature from the body to the brain. So substance P is one of those brain chemicals that tells the body, I'm in pain, I'm in not in pain. So there could be a dysregulation of that brain chemical which lowers the threshold of synaptic activity. What does all that mean? That just means it lowers the threshold of how you're feeling pain. Again, what hurts to you doesn't hurt to somebody else. So are there several other possible causes. You have an autonomic nervous system dysfunction. There it goes, and chronic sleep disorder, emotional stress or trauma, immune or endocrine dys dysfunction, upper spinal, upper spinal cord injury, viral or bacterial infection. Again, all these, all these possible causes will spin off fibromyalgia. Now again, so it goes back to the age old question, well, what will cause this? It could be anything. So, signs and symptoms. So how do I know if you have it? How do I know if I have it? It's always the question. This is what it is. It varies depending on the stress level, physical activity, time of the day, and the weather. The weather plays a big, import, a big factor in how we experience pain. Pain, which is the primary symptom. The pain and tenderness and specific trigger points when pressure is applied. They have an achy, burning, throbbing, or they move around the body, again, migratory. You have muscle tightness, soreness, and spasms. You'd be unable to carry out the normal activities. Pain, often worse in the morning, improves throughout the day, and then it worsens at night. Why does it do that? Why is it worse in the morning, lowers during the daytime, and worse at night? Because when our body is moving, when we create motion in our skeletal system, it decreases the pain sensation because the body just wants to go. We are go beings. They may be consistent or intermittent for years. Okay, so what happens? What will happen? Comorbidity. Sleep disorders, fatigue, you'll get restless leg syndrome or sleep apnea. Gastrointestinal, you have abdominal pain, bloating, gas, cramps, alternating diarrhea, constipation, and IBS. Numbness or tingling sensations. Chronic headaches may include facial and or jaw pain. This is all the stuff that you have fibro could have leaded, you have all the worst factors. Frequent urination, strong ur ur urinate, painful urination. Also, the sensation of swelling, which is edema, in the hands and feet, even though it's not present, you're going to feel these are swollen. You're swollen, and they're not even there. Most, mostly cognitive or memory impairment. What's going to happen, again, remember when you're in pain, how the body works is that if you're in pain, you have a hard time remembering stuff. So there is a brain, there's a brain component in there. Post-exertional malaise and muscle pain, again, you're just feeling exhausted all the time. Morning stiffness, numbness and tingling, like I said, like I mentioned before. Dizziness or lightheadedness. Increased chemical, mechanical, and thermal sensitivities. What this means here, wow, it's just I'm cold all the time. I'm hot all the time. I feel aches and pains all the time. I'm just not feeling good all the time. Trigger points. The main points, again, you can see the base of the neck, the elbows, the hips, and the knees. You're looking at, to diagnose it, 11 of the 18 points. If they ow, 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 most likely you have fibromyalgia. How do they diagnose it? The sad thing is, no laboratory test. They must, we must rely on the patient's word of a three-month history. 
because it has estimated it takes that long, takes on the average of five years to get diagnosed. So the medical history, why is there pain in all four quadrants of their body for a maximum of three months? I'm sorry, a minimum of three months. And at least 11 of the 18 specific tender points when pressure is applied. That's how they diagnose it. So what they want to do, we always want to rule out other symptoms, again, other conditions. Most likely the big C word, cancer, degeneration, chronic fatigue. If you're depressed due to underlying other factors, because fiber will cause depression. Hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, irritable bowel syndrome. Again, if you have a diet condition, okay, gluten, wheat sensitivity will cause irritable bowel. Yes, you'll get fibromyalgia symptom, symptoms. Polymyalgia, there's pain all over. Key thing is Lyme disease. Most important, if you, if you think that you have body aches and pains all over, you want to get checked out for Lyme disease. I have a patient of mine, great lady. She's 80, she's, I'm sorry, she's 92 years old. You would never think in a million years. She has overall body pain. She grew up in Southern Illinois. Again, this is 90 years ago. Turns out about four years ago, I was doing my research on this, and I suspected, okay, she grew up in Southern Illinois 90 years ago. Maybe, again, she's around animals. She grew up on a farm. Actually, it's kind of cool. They actually, they ate everything they grew. It was ate to a house. She has Lyme disease. She doesn't have fibro. She has Lyme disease. Okay, fibro hepatitis, rheumatoid arthritis, and sleep disorders. So these are other things that you want to rule out to make sure that you don't have this. Okay, so the myth, fibromyalgia dangers your joints. It does not danger the joint. You're not gonna be old and decrepit because you have fibromyalgia. It just doesn't happen that way. You'll be old and decrepit for other reasons, not for fibro. The increased pain has not been correlated with any joint or muscle damage. Remember, the scan, the blood, the tissue scans were normal. It's important to understand that activity is good for your joints and will help patients with fibromyalgia to control the pain Fibromyalgia, remember, is not fatal. Fibromyalgia will not kill you. A myth, a myth. You look fine, you're fine, you're in pain. You look fine, you're in pain. You look fine. So nothing's wrong with you. How many people have heard that before? You look fine. So pain is cultural. Our society does not really want to know, how are you? How many times you walk in on the street, hey, how are you? I went to 7-Eleven before I came here. How are you doing? Fine. Good. Good. That's great. Okay. You were diagnosed because your doctor couldn't find anything else wrong with you. That's why you got fibromyalgia. Again, no blood work, no scan. It's all in your head. You look fine. You must have fibro. Okay. So here's a case study. So I'm going to tell you about a patient of mine who has fibro or had fibro. Okay, okay so I got a 47-year-old female patient complaining of overall body aches, aches and pains, cannot sleep, and she's fatigued. Looking at her, you can tell she's stressed. Palpated her body. Palpated mean like I, I touch. 18 tenant points on her body as noted. Her pain, when I asked her how much, how much she's in pain, uh, zero to 10 scale, the 10 being the most pain possible. Doc, I'm an eight all the time. It hurts all the time. Worse at night, worse in the morning, but during the daytime, it's kind of weird because it actually subsides. It's got down to a four. But I'm still stressed out. Lab, labs, remember, blood is within normal limits. Previous doctor, medical doctor, diagnosed her with what? Fibromyalgia. So the goal, Here's the goal of fibromyalgia patient. Here's the thing that you want to treat or you want to look out for, how I help people with fibromyalgia. Serotonin. Serotonin is a brain chemical in our brain that helps calm us down. 80% of serotonin is produced where? In the gut. Only 20% is produced in the brain stem. So this is where it's noted, I tell my patients, you are literally what you eat. If you've been eating, the body basically regenerates cells and makes tissues and stuff like that based on what we're taking in. So if you're 45 years old, in the last 45 
let's, let's say this be generous, last 13, 30 years, you would eat McDonald's, Wendy's, and the, the standard American diet. That's the building blocks that your body has to work with versus somebody who is on a more nutritionally nutrition based diet and supplementation. Do you want to build this house with junk material or do you want to build this house with good material? Because most people are doing it with junk material. Remember, we replenish cells every single day. And if you're eating bad foods, this is what we have to work with. If you're eating good foods, this is what we have to work with. And so when you're taking in bad foods, 80% of the serotonin is produced in the gut. So you have a decreased serotonin levels. This is why they're feeling poopy, literally poopy. You, main goal to improve sleep quality. Serotonin is a calming agent, okay? Think about logically, if you're more calm, you're gonna improve sleep. If you're less calm, you're gonna have erratic sleep. If you have erratic sleep, you're gonna have more pains. Make sure, I always recommend supplement magnesium. Magnesium is a phenomenal smooth muscle relaxant. It's one of the it's one of the minerals in our body that creates one creates a contraction, one relaxes it. Okay, magnesium is noted to help relax muscles. What are fibromyalgia? How do you feel when you're when you have tight muscles? Vitamin B levels, which are usually depleted, the B vitamins is phenomenal for the nervous system. Adequate hydration. Most of the fibromyalgia patients that I that I come across. They're on a daily diet of soda. They love soda. Why do they love soda? They're acidic. You may be acidic, and I see some of you guys drinking sodas right now. Trust Mountain Dew, which is actually, I like it, but bad for you. Soda's acidic. So what happens when that soda reach, re touches your tongue? It feels good. You like it. You're attracted to it. So decrease soda, increase water. Bring your body more alkaline, because you're too acidic. Assure adequate vitamin, high potency multivitamin levels. I always recommend a good multivitamin and a good multimineral. And assure adequate omega-3 fatty acid levels. Omega-3s are phenomenal to help calm down brain inflammation, body inflammation, and so forth and so on. So the omega-3 fish oils are phenomenal. I don't say it's the cure, because I don't want to say I cure anything, but it does help with the symptoms. Most importantly, from a nutritional standpoint, avoid sugar. Sugar causes inflammation, period. Inflammation causes fibromyalgia. Inflammation causes arthritis. Inflammation causes decreased brain function. Inflammation causes not, not good sleeping habits. Inflammation causes irritable bowel. Inflammation causes anxiety. All due to sugar. We are sugar, in America nowadays, in the 21st century, we are sugar holics. 50 years ago, we were, we were what, 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 what were we? We were uh, other holics, but now we're sugar holics. Everything that we have now is sugar based. We used to, do, we used to eat sippet sticks, remember those? Sippet sticks? Yeah, yeah. You wanna get on a hypoallergenic diet which basically means I get them off grains and then get them off dairy. I include high multicolored vegetables with fresh fruit levels. Limit the fruit, okay? And I'll tell you why. You want vegetables. Back in the hunter-gatherer days, they lived off what? They lived off the vegetation of the land. Fruit is a treat. Have fruit as a dessert, not as a main course. Fruit is sugar. It's natural sugar, but still sugar is sugar. You can get fat, eating a bundle of apples and oranges and bananas. You, you'll lose weight by, by eating a bundle of vegetables. You cannot get fat off eating vegetables. Avoid aspartame. Aspartame, for many reasons, it will kill you in more ways than one, it'll kill you slowly. Decrease trans and saturated fats. That's all the uh, Snickers bars fats, the ding dongs, the ho-hos, the canola oils, the vegetable oils. That's all that bad fat for you. What do most people, how, what do most people cook with? Avoid caffeine. This will help improve sleep. Limit alcohol. Amino acid mixtures with L-carnitine and branched chain amino acids. Now what is all that stuff? But I don't work out. I don't care that you don't work out. What happens is that you're depleting your muscles. L-carnitine and branched chain amino acids help with muscle recovery. With exercise and bodybuilding, 
I take branched-chain amino acids and L-carnitine. Why? Because as I'm exercising and my blood sugars actually start to decrease, I don't want my body to dip into the muscle for energy. So what happens the branch chains do, it diverts that attention away from my muscle and it goes right to my triglycerides, to, to the fat stores for energy. Sparing muscle tissue. The key word here, branched chain amino acids, it spares muscle tissue. With fibromyalgia, you are attacking muscle tissue. Limit processed foods, processed foods. This is your deli turkey. Not the deli turkey that you get from behind the counter. I'm talking about the syrup. The, the, the ones you buy over at 7-Eleven or they're in the package 30 for, for $2. Those are loaded with sodium, MSG, sodium nitrate, and all they do is aggravate your pain. Increased water intake, no soda. Supplements. Again, supplements, this, supplements will help. And again, there's many out there. There's brands out there. Do your research. I've been bodybuilding for 25 years. I, I sold t supplements 20 years ago. I know the brands, I know what's familiar to me. If you guys want to talk about brands afterwards, I'll be more than happy to sit down and talk to you. But most importantly, you want to start off with a high potency multivitamin and mineral, with minerals. 5-HTP. 5-HTP is a precursor for serotonin. Well, I always start off my patients that from 50 to 100 milligrams, two to three times per day. Again, you want to space them out. Magnesium citrate. Smooth muscle relaxant. You want to do 250 to 500 milligrams twice per day. The second dosage at, before bedtime because you want to relax the body. Omega-3 fatty acids, you want to do 1,500 milligrams per day. Now there's the most important thing about omega-3s, not six and nines, but threes. You have a DHA and EPA component. You're looking at the two to one ratio. Calcium citrate, 500 milligrams twice a day. You want to divide those doses. B complex, vitamin B is phenomenal for the nervous system. Vitamin D3. Now here's vitamin D3. Now if you guys go on my website, on my YouTube page, I did a whole, about a five minute video on the benefits of vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is phenomenal for a multitude of reasons, predominantly for muscle stuff. Now with fibromyalgia, what happens if you get your vitamin D levels checked, usually they're in the toilet. So what you want to do, you want to get that back up there. And how do you do it? How do you do it fast? How do you hijack it? You start off with 50,000 IUs on Monday, okay? And then Tuesday through Sunday, you want to drop down to 10,000 IUs. That's a lot of vitamin D, somebody says. Well, your vitamin D levels are probably, the reason why you're feeling this way is because you're vitamin D3 depleted. Don't forget. Talk to anybody and do the research who's on vitamin D3. They feel phenomenal, and mostly the levels are in the toilet when they feel poopy, when they're feeling good. I've been taking vitamin D3 for the last five years. I take 8,000 I use a day because of my body weight. I got my D levels checked. My D, again, the D3, the higher the better. My D levels checked were, were only at 62. 62. Now, normal is anywhere from 40 to about 70. Mine's at 62. Now. Vitamin D3 absorption varies too, according to body weight. If you have more fatty tissue on your body, you're actually, the bloodstream is going to absorb less. So if you're 250 pounds, mostly obese, you may want to increase your D3 to make sure that, because what's gonna happen is that the adipose tissue, the fatty tissue acts as an obstacle. So it doesn't get into the bloodstream. Also digestive enzymes. You wanna take with meal, depend, two to three depends on the meal. Probiotics are great. You want to take probiotics at nighttime because it helps replenish the gut. The gut produces serotonin, so you want to bring that up. It makes you feel better. And CoQ10, you want to take 400 milligrams a day. CoQ10 is a phenomenal uh, addition to help with muscle function. Okay? Music tones. Now, with my practice, because I'm a chiropractic functional neurologist, I'm more brain-based. I want to fix this to fix this. Supplements are great. Also do music tones. Music tones work phenomenal to calm the brain. What you want to do, you want to put the music tone in the left ear. Candlelit room, white candle. White candle is very calming. 
Start with 10 minutes to start, and you want to add up, then they will eventually wind up with 20 minutes. The goal is because the right brain is the emotional center. The left brain is, this, is your gas, the right brain is the brake. Also, it's the emotional center. So you want to stimulate the emotional center by listening to music tones through the left ear. Ocean sounds, nature sounds. Why do we like, why do we like the sound of the ocean? Why do we like the early, early, morning, early morning birds chirping? Why do you go, when you go to Sharp Image and you get sound machines, why do they have the ocean, water tones, the beach, the sounds, the night sounds? Why? Because it's very calming. It's very calming. Those sounds are very calming to the right brain. It helps calm down the emotional center of the right brain. Listen to the left ear. Because the right brain stimulates the serotonin and GABA and also stimulates the emotional center. So the focus with my patients, I want to stimulate the right brain so the brain chemicals that make you feel all good get amplified and get, get working again. Because it, they're not working, that's why, you get, that's why the patients have fibromyalgia. So then what I'll also, can, what I do for my patients? Acupuncture, I treat that for, the con, for the chronic pain. Massage therapy helps relieve tightness. Chiropractic manipulation, this is what I work, improves the nervous system and relieves pain. And also, I recommend melatonin. Melatonin helps with the sleeping pattern. I don't get them on melatonin for long term because melatonin isn't a hormone. It will screw up your own hormonal system. So I usually get them on melatonin just to start off because the main goal is for them to sleep. Pain management, the goal is to reduce pain, improve sleep, and relieve associated symptoms. Exercise, now with people with fibromyalgia, I understand, I understand it hurts to exercise. So I always recommend first moderation. Low impact aerobic activity and strength training. You want to get the body moving, flush out all the stuff that's, that's trapped in the muscular system. Improved fitness, symptoms are usually decreased with exercise. I recommend a maximal at the beginning three times a week for 30 to 40 minutes. If you can't do 30 to 40 minutes, start off with 15 to 20. If you can't do 15 to 20, start off with 5 to 10. Start, start doing something to stimulate the musculoskeletal system to get, it, to get it back on track. And you will feel good. I got patients I deal with, this is what happened, this is, this is how it helps them. Home therapies, yoga. I have a female patient of mine, actually a husband and wife. She had fibromyalgia, so she started doing yoga at home, which she made him do it, and now they have a happy marriage, now they both do yoga together. Meditation, again, helps calm the mind. Stretching, warm Epsom salt baths, capsaicin creams, and massage tools. If you have like those like little thumpers that you could use, don't use it too long because it may hurt, but again, so anything that'll help calm down the muscle tightness. So the prognosis, so what's gonna happen in the long run? Unfortunately, there's no cure. None of my patients were cured of their fibromyalgia, okay? Because remember, it's a syndrome. In order to cure something, cure, it has to be a disease, okay? So there's no cure. I've helped a lot of patients with fibromyalgia, with their symptomatology. There's no cure, it's very rare to develop, and it's very rare to develop into an autoimmune. So I always recommend emotional or, or social support and education. Listen to podcasts. Right now in the 21st century, you guys, you guys have a plethora, a plethora of information out there on iTunes. I continuously educate myself with, I, with iPods all the time, with iTunes all the time. So again, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. I hope you guys learned something. Um, again, my office is located in Carroll Stream. My website is www.totohealthdupage.com. Please like me on my Facebook page. Again, I got a lot of videos on there. And again, I hope, hope to see you guys soon. Thank you very much.